So I thought it's finally time that I uh, sit down and talk about my experience in jail. Um, I'm going to try to remember as much as I can. Uh, I'm just going to get into it, I guess. Um, so I'm in court, um, standing in front of the judge, waiting to hear uh, my sentence. At the time, the judge sentenced me to 18 months. Um, I'll get into that. So the judge hits the gavel, um, says 18 months, gives me a couple minutes, or not even a couple minutes, a couple seconds to say goodbye to some people that are behind me, um, family members, my dad was there, Judy was there, and, uh, yeah, and that was it, they just took me off and brought me in the holding cells under the court. Those couple hours waiting for court to finish was was rough. I had I'd never gone to jail before. I have no idea. I've never been in trouble. I've never... So what was weird is they kept me separated uh, from the other inmates, and I didn't really know why at the time. I saw them, so they take you out of the holding holding uh, cell, and they bring you into the, the, whatever it's called, the paddy wagon or whatever, that square, scary truck. And I watched them connect like four or five guys together and then put them in a big, where they're all sitting at the same, in the same spot. I was put in this little box at the back and I mean, it was little. I had uh, my hands shackled, and my hands shackled to my feet. And like, right here was a door, right here was a door, right here was a wall, and a wall. Oops, sorry. So yeah, so very confined. Um, and obviously, I'm I'm terrified at this moment. Uh, in my brain, I'm thinking I'm not going to see my parents uh, for quite a long time. I'm embarrassed. Just absolutely full of shame. And on my way to an unknown, terrifying place. So the van, the truck pulls out, and I have a, I'm Cornwall to Ottawa, like this, um, hand shackled. And, uh, And I remember there's a little there's a little window here, and there's a little camera here, and so the drivers can see you. And at that point, I think I was just trying to wrap my head around where I was going and how I was going to act, and you know everything you see on every movie you've ever watched that had a jail scene or a prison scene. So it's about an hour. A little over an hour to get to um, the jail. I have a little window here on the door, and I can. It's foggy though, but I can kind of see um, the turns we're making. Like I can see every turn we're making driving out of Cornwall. And uh, when I um, so we pull into the jail, and it's terrifying. You go through all the gates and doors that you see in um, in movies and stuff, uh, barbed wire. And... Uh, so I get there, and they do they take you out of the thing of the 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 truck, uh, the unshackling and everything. And remember, I'm still by myself. There was the four or five guys over there, like in the other, and then there was me, and they kept putting me by myself. And I didn't think anything of it. I just, I have no, I have no idea about the rules of jail and stuff like that. So I just kind of went with it. Uh, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, sir. Yes, sir. Like being polite as I can. Um, cause it's pretty scary in there. And, uh, they give you a bunch of needles. They check you for different diseases and they make you take a shower. Um, but I was sitting in an intake. Uh, I got, I was in my court clothes. So I had collared shirt, dress pants. 
and uh, I was in the int the uh, intake place. There was two or three other guys in there. Um, one guy was in the corner, just covered in staples and tattoos, or not tattoos, covered in um, staples and stitches. And then there was another dude right here had a giant scar on his face, <laughs> and uh, I was terrified of both of those guys. But then it turns out. I was in the range, same range with them, and uh, they're just dudes. They're two super nice guys. Like I, I got along great with both, and it's just all these pre, you know, like when you watch movies and TV shows, everything's terrifying when it comes to jail. And so they made me take a shower, and they put me by myself again after I get that nice orange jumpsuit on that you see in a, a, any any orange any orange any jail movie or, or TV show sorry like obviously um, I haven't talked about this with anyone uh, I, I talked about it in therapy and stuff but I've never been I've never been open about it and while I'm talking about it it's starting to bring back uh, memories Anyways, I finally asked one of the guards, why am I always by myself? And the guard says, well, we're putting you in PC. I don't know what PC means. Uh, I asked him, what does PC mean? And he says, protective custody. Uh, I said, okay, what, what is protective custody? He says, well, we're going to put you in a spot where there's um, less distraction and... The guards can keep an eye on me and things like that. And PC, from what I know, that's where like the child molesters go and the rapists and the snitches. So I ask him that. Are those the people that I'm going to be with? And he goes, yep. And I go, nope. I'm not going there. And he goes, well, your only other option is, is gen pop, general population. I'm like, all right, put me there. So, like, the way they bring you, like, there's windows all in the range. So all the guys can see you when you're about to be put in the range. And I'm talking to the guards a little bit, which you're not really supposed to do, but it's my first time. And um, he's explaining to me again why they were going to put me in PC and asked me again for last time, do you want to go to protective custody? And I said, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because keep in mind, I'm going for therapy uh, for being abused myself as a child. So I don't want to be with the rest of those fucking monsters in there. And Anyway, so they open the door, clink, that big key, clink, clink, double door, clink, clink. And they swing it open, and they walk me into the range. And you can hear the guys, new fish, new fish, and they just all crowd around me. 